What's up guys? It's Tom Burkhart. Back again with the white cars. No, I can't do it. Damn, Daniel. Uh, we're in the 2016 Hyundai Sonata Sport 2.0T today and want to go out and do a uh, big understeer. Want to go out and do a quick drive review uh, of this car, which, uh, which you know, I really, really do like and um, and like a lot better now that I've just looked at its actual sticker price. Um, I, I'd assume that the, the Sonata Turbo was coming in, you know, 32 base and maybe 35 as equipped. But this car is is way below that. It's $29,000 uh, as the base price and with just floor mats as $125 option and delivery, we are at like uh, just about $30,000 even, which for this car is really, really good. Um, 245 horsepower from the Sonata's uh, two liter turbo engine and 261, I believe, foot pounds of torque which is really good, which is like spot on with the Buick Regal GS, which costs, you know, ten to $15,000 more than this car. Um, so, you know, that's that's all really, really good. And, and just getting a car wash right now, I was trying to think, you know, if I was buying a $30,000 sedan, is there anything else that is more rewarding than this Sonata Sport? And it's it's really, it's hard to think of anything. Um, the, the Camry V6 and, uh, and Accord Sport and stuff like that, come in with base prices of like about 32 grand and really rush up to about 36 with some good equipment. Um, so, uh, I mean, and that's just a totally different ball game. I mean, if $30,000 is your ceiling, the Sonata Sport is fantastic. Really, really fast, a much more rewarding, well, not really, really fast, but faster, significantly, like at least two seconds faster than the base Sonata. Um, and a good one second up on the new uh, Sonata Eco with its dual clutch, seven speed automatic transmission and 1.6 liter turbocharged engine. But this turbo is uh, is the, one of the sportiest ones that Hyundai has going. Um, and it, it, it's good, it's, it pulls well. Um, it works nicely with the six speed automatic transmission with paddle shifters, as you can see. For uh, good handling, you know, overall good passing power. I mean, especially versus these base mid-size sedans. I uh, was in a, an Altima very recently that uh, running the base four-cylinder engine, and it is like really, really slow. It's it's difficult to pass people confidently with that little power. Um, so the Sonata Sport really uh, is is clutch in that regard. But there are some issues uh, with the Sonata Sport. Um, even though it is, it, I really like it in this white pearl paint job. Um, the Sport 2.0T has 18 inch wheels, some a diffuser in back, an LED headlight, or excuse me, LED accents are standard for all Sonatas. But uh, the Sonata Sport has LED taillights uh, as well as um, HID low beams. And really, it's pretty convincing. It's got quad exhaust pipes in back, which are fantastic. Uh, really, really good to see on any, uh, any um, value price vehicle. But you know there are some issues like uh, that I've identified in this in my week of a drive in the Sonata Sport. Uh, the first one being like uh, it's it's not actually that fast, so it could be a lot quicker. You know the the, the big claim about um, the turbocharged four cylinders is that they deliver the speed of a V6, but you know when driven very very gently, they can offer the fuel economy of um, of a four cylinder. But you know, that is really mostly theoretical because if you drive them fast, they actually use more gas than, than a V6 would. Um, uh, so, okay, so we just turned traction control off. So let's do um, a little bit of a, a mini launch. Just out on some country roads here. <laughs> so it's not that fast. I mean, the sprint time for this car is, is like, maybe 6.9 seconds, I mean, maybe into the sevens. So it could definitely be quicker versus even the Chrysler 200 CV6, which is 5.8 seconds, Malibu Turbo 5.9, um, and Camry V6 at 6.0. I mean, this this is pretty down. That's that's down at least a half second and, and likely more like a second or a second and a half versus the quickest cars in the midsize segment. But it is vastly faster than, than the base Sonata, like we mentioned, and drives so much better. Um, with Sport Tune suspension and a totally different steering system than the base Sonata, the Sport 2.0T is really kind of a canyon carver. Um, it's It's got really uh, a terrific directional stability, but also really confidence-inspiring control around the corners. Um, and this is largely thanks to uh, the rack-mounted power steering system. It, uh, Hyundai calls it RMPDS, which is a long acronym, uh, but is very, very important. Versus just the... Um, 
the uh, uh, electronic power steering system, the rack mounted power steering system has more has so much more control, is much more accurate feeling, and inspires much more confidence on the road uh, at all times. Whether you're cornering or not, it's just a lot more feelsome um, and direct and accurate. So love that, um, and love that the uh, the Sonata Sport has uh, you know a frisky, friskier, playful side, which is totally absent in the Altima SL, and largely absent in uh, in, the, in even the Camry V6 XSE. They're just not very sporty cars. I mean, they're just not. People don't. People, that's not necessarily what people want. So, um, just kind of happy that, that Hyundai has achieved a really nice um, balance here in terms of uh, overall refinement, ride comfort, uh, and the ability for it to to corner and handle really nicely. So that's that's really good. And this steering itself firms up pretty dramatically um, based on the drive modes that you are in. So there is standard, eco, and then sport. And that, those are operated via this little control here. So we can go into eco right now, um, which dulls the throttle and really makes everything uh, as efficient as possible. And is, is, uh, is notably slower than it is in sport mode, where the throttle is much more eager um, and there's much more high rev uh, inertia and energy from the 245 horsepower engine through the six-speed automatic to the front wheels. So that's really good, but something that is not great about the drive modes is that, um, okay, so in so in normal or eco, the steering is, is light. It goes it is lighter than it is in sport, of course, but really never loses that sort of accuracy um, and tactile feedback that lets you just drive the car confidently. You don't really, you know, you don't have to concentrate as much on keeping the car uh, in line because it's just so much easier to drive already uh, um, with this superior rack mounted power steering system. So that's those are all really really good. Um, the downside I have to mention though because it's very very noticeable and like pretty irritating in traffic is that in sport mode uh, the throttle is is really jumpy. It's really jumpy and really can be really hard to be smooth on the throttle. Let's got me a manual. Um, I'm gonna let's turn off here and I'll. I'll try to show you guys what I mean a little bit. It's just really hard to be smooth, again, smoothly come on the throttle um, without having the car sort of like jackrabbit forward, which in traffic is really, really inconvenient uh, because then you're like constantly braking and it's, it's hard to judge. So we're just like at five miles an hour in sport mode and I'm gonna dab the throttle as light as I can. Okay, so that's that was as light as I could possibly do it. Okay, let's try again. It's like as light as possible and all of a sudden you're like surging forward, which is not great. Um, so in normal, it's much more chill, um, and it's, you know, it will just like, this is as little as I can do it. So you can see the difference. I mean, obviously in sport, it's like, it's, it's, um, it's trying to be enthusiastic and energetic, but it's, uh, it um, makes the car uh, more difficult to drive, which is, which is not great because when you're in traffic, then you don't want to have it in sport mode because it's too jumpy. But if you put it back in normal, then the turbo isn't as eager and the steering goes uh, goes to its uh, medium lightness setting. So, you know, it would be nice if, the, if that were better judged. Um, but, you know, the overall feel from the, from the, you know, we have a floor mounted throttle here like Porsches, uh, which is really nice and much more comfortable for long drives. Um, great brake feel, really strong brakes actually. Um, felt feeling significantly stronger and more confidence inspiring than even the, uh, the 2016 Maxima SR, uh, which had some dramatic brake fade in our hands. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, those drive mode things are, I mean, that's, those, that's subtle stuff. Hyundai can fix that. And they're very, very attentive and, and are likely um, uh, working on they're, they're incrementally making their cars seriously good to drive, um, which is really nice uh, because they, of course, have great cabins, terrific sense of luxury, uh, refinement, and value for the money. Sorry, I've got some, some crap in the back seat that's making noise. Um, but overall, they're so good. So it's like you just want them to get to that like last bit of little, like, come on, you know, let's get this thing, like, you know, perfect. Um, so, of course, a lot of this stuff is subjective, but I think that a lot of people would notice that 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 in sport mode that the throttle is really, really jumpy from, from a start and at low speeds. Uh, so that's, that's something to note. It's a pretty clean 
lane off the line. There's not much, there's barely any torque steer. I mean, it sometimes like will be, it needs a hand on it just so that it's not wandering. But, um, but really not much torque steer like uh, like the Camry V6 um, and the Accord V6 really, uh, you know, which are constant when driving those cars uh, enthusiastically. So, you know, really good things about having the turbo. I just wish it were like, you know, really a hot turbo and boosted, you know, much, much hotter than it is right now. 245 horsepower from a two liter four cylinder of course is pretty good. I mean, that's like up 35 versus what you even get in the, the Volkswagen Golf GCI. So that's, that's, you know, objectively very, very good. And um, at this $30,000 price is, is terrific. Uh, but but uh, in addition to not having that much like raw power, the tur this engine sounds really bad. It sounds bad. I, I don't know how else to say it. Um, it's I know, it's part of the reason I wanted to take a video because it's really it's almost like unbelievable. But I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to tell in the video. But there's just like a lot of like at low speeds. It's just sort of like it's, it's ticky, you know, because it's direct injection. And it just is sort of like lumpy and never really that. It, it doesn't sound uh, sound very good, which is weird because with the window open on high revs, it actually does sound good. So we've got ooh, there's a Legacy GT. It's a cool car. You know, it's a good sounding engine. There's just there's just something about it that really is not satisfying. So it's not letting me go into first gear right now, which like, I, I think it should. Um, the other thing is the six-speed auto box is pretty, it has pretty widely spaced ratios. There's no exhaust note whatsoever that I can discern. Um, and so you really just are focused on, you hear the, the turbo and or you sort of like the engine's mechanical wind up in front. Um, and you just see, hear sort of like bizarre, I don't know, bizarre noises um, from the turbo when it's not being worked hard. But you never really get the rush of like, you know, the, the boost whoosh or, or some of the stuff that we've even seen um, on other Hyundais with this engine, like the uh, the Veloster Rally, for example, which sounded really, really fun and, and very turbocharged and it was all the better for it. Whereas this car is sort of so focused on being refined at like, like what we're doing now at like 65 miles an hour that um, it really just like is so unexciting sounding. Uh, at idle um, when you're walk when you like start up the car if you get out and walk around it sounds terrible and um, and really just in, in most driving situations it's 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 not a it's just not a good sound it, it you know it's even further like sorry let me try to phrase this a little bit better to describe it it's just sort of dull and groany it almost reminds me of a diesel I mean it really just don't like the way it sounds so I think they could definitely work on that with like some kind of active air box um, would be would be really really helpful uh, or some kind of actuator. I mean I don't really know what the solution is, but uh, but if I were buying a turbocharged car, I would really want to. In addition to the extra power and speed, you know you want you want it to have more character um, and to actually and to be. Uh, to not only drive sporty but to sound sporty and uh, and just live live the part. So we'll get past right now. Oh, this is touchy. Alright, come on, it's not a sport. You can do it. Alright, nice. So yeah, obviously plenty of passing power. Um, really a terrific car. Uh, love the driving position. The cabin is really, really good. I know it's it, it's very high quality, feels absolutely bulletproof. Um, and even without navigation on this car, I've been totally totally happy with the uh, the Bluetooth integration as well as uh, smartphone audio and, and video playback, uh, or you know, video playback with the audio going through the system. Uh, we've got some apps here like Pandora and then Blue Link uh, that, that is able to, to uh, integrate more functions. But overall, this is really just like, it's it's an effortless mid-sized car, you know, for people who want uh, a fairly big back seat, but really good fuel economy and uh, and just um, effortless reliability and ease of use. The Sonata Sport is great. I recommend it uh, wholeheartedly over the base Sonata, which is good, but for but really for for performance drivers, um, it it's uh, it's pretty it's back in that sort of Altima four cylinder CVT league where uh, you know everything's super light and and pretty slow. I mean, it's so so that stuff is is uh, subjective. Of course, but for fast drivers and like you guys watching this video, the Sonata Sport is really the one to go for in the range. 
But uh, that being said, we would love it uh, if they uh, were able to juice a little bit more power out of this engine and make the sport mode uh, a little less compromised with that uh, that jumpy throttle. And then, of course, um, the the engine note, of course, could sound sound a little bit better. Um, the other thing that uh, that is kind of like unusual is Sonata. The Sonatas in this generation look like they the base ones with the standard wheels, which I think are 16s. They look like like unbelievable, unbelievably small wheels. And even this car, um, the Sonata Sport 2.0T, uh, on its 18-inch rims. I mean, like I couldn't believe that these were 18 18s until um, until I, I actually looked at the tire because they look so small in the wheelhouse for some reason. So the wheels look pretty teeny, uh, so this car could definitely benefit visually from uh, sort of an, an increase in aggression with, with larger wheels. But then you might lose a lot of this, you know, really well-judged uh, ride comfort that feels very European. I mean, it's, you, you know what is going on with the road, but it's never uncomfortable and it's always very well damped, even when you go over, you know, crazy ridges or, or weird bumps and stuff like that. There's no, there's no float or any of the other symptoms that can affect really softly sprung mid-size and full-size cars. So uh, really liking the Sonata Sport in a lot of ways. I think, you know, if, if this were my car, like if life, if life was frozen right now and I was driving this, I would be very, very happy. Certainly much happier than, uh, than I would be in a four-cylinder uh, Accord Camry uh, Fusion. <laughs> um, uh, the Super Legacy without the turbo, of course. I mean, really, those four cylinders are really just, they take the volume of the sales because lots of people are just shopping on price or they're not um, big big performance drivers. But really, for people who, who want a mid-sized car for all the benefits we discussed, but also want to have power, um, this is a really good option without sacrificing, uh, without costing too much and, and being you know, too hard at the fuel pump. So, all right, 2016 Hyundai Sonata Sport 2.0T. This uh, this turbocharged car comes in with a base price of 29,000, and as tested, is 30k out the door. Pretty well equipped. No options, but you know, nice leather seats, really supportive, uh, really terrific range of adjustment, good driving position, um, and just just a fan overall. All right, we'll see you guys next time.